is up everybody I will be bringing you a motorcycle vlog this one's uh, more of a ride along it's gonna be long uh, because I will be driving the complete length of Seoul Seoul special city <laughs> and going over my impressions of each of the districts so just to start you off here we are in Hanam and if you've been watching my vlogs you know I come here quite a lot because it is the most eastern area of Seoul as a matter of fact it might even be categorized as Gyeonggi province now this gets quite confusing to foreigners uh, I'm a foreigner technically and even people who've been here for quite a while because the lines are merged between what is Seoul special district uh, uh, special district special city and what is Gyeonggi province the reason why they call it a special city is it's almost like Washington DC District of Columbia it is categorized as its own province so for a little background, uh, don't quote me on all these numbers to the dot, but after Googling, roughly the population of Korea is slightly over 50 million. Population of just Seoul City is over 10 million. That's huge, guys. That is a huge city. It's so big that the, the province that basically Seoul Special City is in, which is Gyeonggi Province, it, it started to protrude out into that area. What a couple decades ago were just rice fields are these huge new cities. Hanam being one of them. As you can see, there's development right here on the left. Brand new, big ass complex. I don't know what it's gonna be probably another shopping mall, office complex, etc. It's just Koreans are ingenious at fitting as many people into a small Thai space as possible. I think I haven't seen any other city that's so great at it. You'll just see high rise after high rise. Uh, that being said, I think I just made, god darn it, a wrong turn. And uh, being so complex, <laughs> uh, the roads here are quite complex. So, yes, and uh, don't, this, I just want to make it clear. Seoul isn't in Gyeonggi province, as in it is Gyeonggi province technically. It is in the geographic location of Gyeonggi province. But Seoul itself is a province in itself because it's so darn big, okay? So I just wanted to clear that out for people who may be confused. I, I, it's quite complex to me as well. Uh, but Seoul City itself is a province of its own. And within Seoul, you'll have different coups, or the best way I could say it is districts. But coming from Orange County, I would say it's other cities. And Seoul would be more of a county, although it's it would <laughs> deprive Seoul of its grandness to call it a county because it's just so darn big it's it's nothing compared to Orange County I mean it's it's two three times more populated I imagine um, although I would you know I haven't checked what the population of Orange County is but geographically it's probably the same size but Koreans are just so much better at uh, fitting a lot of people into a smaller tight space it's I'm sure it's gonna be bigger and you'll see uh, <laughs> Although this is the relative outskirts of Seoul, you can see it's already quite packed in here. And uh, as we venture off more into the center, you'll see it gets even more packed. Uh, hold on, let me try to concentrate here. Uh, I'm using a new GPS system <laughs> uh, because it's always constantly a struggle to find your way around here. Um, all right, here we go. Making a right. So this is, uh, yeah, again, Hanam, 
one of the newer cities. But we are actually traveling through the south of the Han Gang River, the Han River. And the Han River plays a significant part, just not in Seoul, but in Korea. Everything will be named in relation to the Han River. I mean, they call, although Korea is called Korea too, uh, it's a misnomer actually, because I guess uh, some Westerners started to call it Korea based on Koguryo, which is like an old kingdom that's now defunct, but it just sort of stuck. But Koreans call themselves the Han people, Hanguk, and it's a Han country, basically, if you literally translate it. Han Gang is the Han River, and um, You'll see as we pass through some of these cities, a lot of uh, the cities are in relation to the river, Kang, which is, which translates into river. So y'all know about Gangnam, just because Sai made such a popular song about Gangnam style. You know, maybe, maybe I'm, <laughs> that's old school now, but back when I was in the States, that was oh, the, the trending thing, the newest thing, Gangnam style. That just basically means south of the river. So um, everything in the south of the river is relatively new, but as we s sort of go over to the west, it will get into like the older part of town. Oh geez, I made a boo-boo here. I have to wait until these pedestrian light turns red. Oh man. I don't know if I could actually vlog and <laughs> try to navigate Seoul at the same time. Uh, it's supposed to be a relative straightaway. Okay, gotta be careful. Because there's cops everywhere. Alright. Anyways. Uh... Excuse my stuttering. I have to just make sure I'm not breaking any laws. Oh, they got H-bar here. What is this? This GPS system is totally killing me, guys. I don't know why it's telling me to do this. Oh, now it wants me to... Oh. Oh. I'm not... I'm not... I'm about to not recommend neighbor maps right now. <laughs> I'm going to switch back to Kakao. This is taking me around in circles, but it'll be more enjoyable for you, I guess, because you'll get to see a bit more of Seoul as I get... I, I should title this Lost in Seoul. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> it's making me do a whole circle around this place. Oh, I hate these intersections. Okay, alrighty then. Yeah, because it could be completely green, but you have to be careful that because, uh, oh man, I did a driving guide here in Seoul. How to get the driver's license, and let me tell you, it's the roads here are just a mess. <sighs> Alright, so let me let me get back into my little mantra and finish up. A little intro to what we're, we'll be doing here. Um, so I'll be driving through the south of the river which is relatively newer compared to the north. Being that you know north is actually where oh, this guy's honking at me because he's like you're pausing one two second too long to think about if you can make a right turn on red. <laughs> okay all right anyways uh, Oh, back to where, where I was. I can't, I can't get a breather. Oh, guys, this is like actually pleasant. This is pleasant. Just what you wait until we get into the center. But up in the north, that's where the palace is. North of the river. So that's old Seoul. Um, but south of the river and the Gyeonggi province where the newer cities are developing, I would say it's probably more livable. And this is coming from someone, I mean, you can relate if you're from Southern California. 
not I mean I hated really I hated LA um, I hate adventuring in there it's just too cramped crowded the streets are just too narrow um, when I drive my little lowered s2000 convertible then you know I'm always running into road bumps I have to go up diagonally that's that's just sort of how center of Seoul is it's not really planned it's uh, it's beautiful in its own way but when you want to live in a place with a family and you want to drive your kids to school, etc. You don't want to be dealing with that every day. It gets old. So these newer cities in the outskirts have become popular. And even though they're sort of in the outskirts, believe you me, real estate prices are expensive. I mean, the most expensive areas are like Gangnam, and that's technically a newer area. So it's very similar to Orange County, I think, where us Orange County people and you know Kobe Bryant and all the basketball stars would attest is a better place to live right but uh, you sort of work within the center of the city but sort of unlike LA I guess this you know they don't have like the homeless issues in Seoul etc so in the center of the city is also really nice to live in um, it's, it's just very very crowded uh, it's not really a place for you to be driving etc uh, maybe if you're young and you're okay taking public transport all the time like me etc that's where you want to be but you know I'll let the, the visuals do the talking itself and let you decide what's a more pleasant area to live but Koreans are more and more venturing out into these outskirts, these new cities because uh, it's just more family friendly and uh, it's getting quite unaffordable because of that even kilometers out in Gyeonggi province because you'll notice they all just sort of generally look alike like this which is not a bad thing, it's nicely developed, modern um, I think I'm supposed to make a right turn here. Okay, checking no red, no red, okay it's red. Alright, I think I'm good. Alright! Anyways, instead of talking about Gangnam, I'll be venturing into there. And Gangnam now is no longer a new city. You'll see it's quite developed. Um, but before we get into Gangnam, there's other districts, which I can't remember on top of my head. We'll be crossing about five, six, seven districts. <laughs> um, I'll just subtitle it as I drive into it, I guess. And uh, just sort of give you my impressions of the city, because it is myself first time I'm actually sort of driving through it like in this manner uh, because I'm always taking public transport uh, the reason I am preferring to do a scooter though is because of COVID and my family is concerned that I'll be bringing in the virus uh, sitting in the subway for hours, right? I can't blame them. They got children um, and uh, elderly, so here we go. Alright. Oh man, it's a constant battle trying to... Oh, huge construction on the left still. To be honest with you guys, just based on my impression, I think Hanam is really nice. Um, I would like to live here if I had to choose. Everything is uh, pretty convenient. The malls are completely new, easy to navigate. They're more the western style malls and uh, you'll see that in one of my videos where I covered the Hanam Starfield Mall because the traditional Korean style malls and shopping areas are very compact. Um, how do you say? Western style malls are like two, three floors high. They span a vast area. 
high ceilings, but traditional Korean style malls are like a huge building, very tall. Width-wise, it's very small, so you're just constantly going up, and each floor is like different. So it's like men's department, first floor, junior, second floor, like that, instead of having one department store uh, with three, four departments. All right. So. Now it's sort of looking rural. But you'll see these breaks very consistently here in Seoul because um, Korea in general, especially northern you know, Korea where Seoul is, is a very mountainous area. Uh, Seoul was probably all mountains. My aunt was uh, joking uh, when I said, you know, when I climb these mountains that are situated around Seoul, they're some of the most difficult hikes uh, as I've been doing my hiking vlogs. And uh, she said, yeah, the reason for that is, is none of the smaller mountains exist because they cut them all down to build apartments. Uh, and uh, and if you climb Kwanok Mountain and, and you're overlooking Seoul, you, you just see how in between the little valleys, they've used every bit of square footage to create some kind of real estate. But in the outskirts, there's still relatively a green belt. And um, it's right now being discussed whether or not they would, they should uh, develop this or not. It's a big controversy because uh, the biggest complaint of Koreans is uh, not being able to find affordable housing. So they're saying, would you like to sacrifice your future and cut down these green belts uh, just so that uh, you can have more affordable housing, you know? And uh, a lot of correlation being made to Japan, etc., where Tokyo did relatively similar things with their green belt, and they're regretting it because housing isn't that much more affordable um, because the center of the city is always going to be expensive, whereas the outskirts, it's really depreciating in value where they're having to give it away. And that's what will probably happen in Seoul as well. Um, maybe even more exaggerated. Um, because the birth rate in Korea, you know, it's, it's, it's declined. It's not declining, it's declined. And the population will be declining. So, with foreigners, etc., investing into the center of the city and real estate, Especially with its proximity to China and all that Chinese money, the center of Seoul will never be affordable. But you'll just it'll just be less livable without green space. All right. So off in the distance, I'm not sure if you can see it. Huge landmark. It's the Lotte World Towers. It is the biggest, tallest building in Korea and uh, if it wasn't for the Chinese building like the world's you know first second and third tallest buildings etc uh, that little world tower would be pretty significantly large it would be like the tallest building in Asia or something but I don't know they they sort of say it's like the tallest building in the I don't know something that excluded China <laughs> OECD or something like that. I don't know, but it's huge. It's uh, I can't quote on the top of my head how many floors it is, but when I see that, I know I'm like in Gangnam. So heading over there, over this mountain pass. 
Uh, over to the left, I see by these road signs, it's Seo Hanam. Tong Seo. It would be Western Hanam. Nam means south, so it's like the western part of the south. Man, it's complicated. Uh, you know what? Why am I doing this? I have to go straight. But this huge bus is blocking my view on the oncoming traffic, so it's very dangerous to merge right. But this is what I hate about uh, Seoul roads. You'll be driving, and all of a sudden, the... What's supposed to be a straightaway will turn into a left turn only. And that is what's gonna kill you in the driving test. Because you're supposed to be signaling... Uh, like 30 meters before you merge. And with all these turns you'll have to do during it, you have to memorize the routes to know if you have to stay in the middle lane, etc., to continue going straight, etc. Because it's an instant fail if you all of a sudden merge into a left turn only and then you merge right because you'll be doing like a lane violation, etc. Oh my god, okay. Jeez, I'm sort of dreading going into sort of the center because this is this is still not even Gangnam. Oh man. Gangnam guys. Oh, I took my driver's license test there and I failed it. The road test. The, ro oh, the signs are just too complicated. The roads are not even perpendicular it's it's not even perpendicular per se right um, it's like diagonal etc oh, I'm getting stuck be oh. I'll be like this motorcycle guy Follow the motorcycle delivery, guys. It's just like being caught. They're the ones that know how to get in and around the city. All right, let me check. Okay, I just need to make a left turn up there. And then it looks like it's a relative straightaway. So what district is this? This would be Gangdong. Dongseo? So east of the river, Gangnam would be next, <laughs> south of the river. Uh, technically, the Hangang River goes, you know, east and west, but it does a little smiley face curve. So that's how you could technically be east of the river. So, uh, why did I want to bring sort of attention and really see for myself uh, in more detail, like the flavor of each of these districts and not just lump them in as Seoul? Well, I don't think I'll be doing it justice, guys, because population of Seoul, again, is over 10 million. The next largest city is Busan. And, you know, some people might be thinking, oh, it's Busan, so it's probably, if it's the second largest, Seoul's 10 million, that's probably like 8 million. No, it's not. The second largest city population is 3.5 million. Do you, do you guys get where I'm going at? Each of these districts in Seoul have the same significance, flavor, and character as any of the larger cities in Korea. So that's why I, I think when you cover Seoul, you have to cover it understanding the distinct flavors of each of the districts. And 
I guess I was sort of ignorant one time and just lumped everything in together but believe you me each of these residents of the different districts of Seoul do not think it's all the same <laughs> you know talk to a person who owns an apartment in Gangnam and tell them ah oh, it's all just the same where you live no they're quite proud of owning an apartment in Gangnam which is only a couple kilometers away from any of its neighboring areas right um, so it, it's very similar uh, to Bangkok I guess in that sense maybe not so similar to America because in America it's just the square footage is so big the city is city except for some of the bigger ones like New York right I mean if you're from Harlem you're Harlem you don't associate you, you don't want to like have people just generalize and say oh all you New Yorkers are the same right you're from Harlem then you're gonna say I'm gonna be different from actually I don't know anything about New York but you guys seem to be like talking about east side west side blah 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 so <laughs> yeah people from Seoul don't want to be uh, generalized it's all the same kind of people because they aren't oh god I missed the turn oh geez I thought I have to do a left turn again but now I have to do like a circle what is happening here? Okay, so you'll get a nice little tour of... <laughs> seems like I'm doing a circle, missing mix, missing something and doing a circle. Oh, what? I missed the circle again. Now it's routing me straight and telling me to do a U-turn. Great! Ah, oh, jeez. Now how can I do a U-turn? Oh, ho. Ah, oh, it's too late. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Lost in Seoul. That should be th this this was supposed to be like a 1 hour vlog, but I think I'm going to have to switch batteries. <sighs> All right. You know what? This might be more enjoyable for you guys because <clears throat> I'm going into more of the congested areas, which actually I wanted to avoid because it's still congested in the in the big roads. But it's gonna take me closer to the river. Oh man. I'm still not even in Gangnam. Look how crowded this place is. In these crosswalks, uh, I like to observe how people dress. It's, it's interesting because people dress differently based on the, the district you're in. Um, not only are the age demographics and the income levels different, but they just have its own little flavor. So if you go to Gangnam, it's like a business district, right? And people think it's like a partying district or a clubbing district because of uh, Sai, but it's a business district. That's where Samsung, etc. are based out of <clears throat> a lot of the trade centers, etc. So, you know, girls aren't dressed up to go clubbing, etc. That's like a misconception. They're usually dressed up in like business suits, uh, working, office, guys are in suits, etc. Uh, but if I had to throw like a big difference to that would be like, uh, you know, Hongdae area where it's like a college area. 
but even um, people not going to college oh my gosh this is this is such a mess oh my gosh oh I'll be lucky not to get in an accident all right saying left turn Let me in, let me in. But even the the woman, let's say they go out, you know, to meet friends or drink in Hongdae. But if they go to Hongdae, they're gonna dress looking young. Because they're surrounded by young people, right? They don't wanna look like the sore thumb that's sticking out wearing a business suit in Hongdae <laughs> so uh, that's one way I, I could tell sort of like uh, how the vibe of the city or the district here I just sort of see if I had to make an observation just based on that one intersection uh, very casual very casual dressing lots of ajumas um, like, look, on the right, etc. Right? Very casual. There's one guy in a business suit, probably going to work. But it's, uh, I would categorize this place as a residential area, basically. And, uh, an old school residential area at that. Uh, because the newer areas, the The population is usually younger because they're they're the ones that are starting their new families out there. So this is one way I can sort of tell. Oh, this is how a district is. That's what I can expect. Huh? Let me know in the comments below what you think about the vibe of this district because quite frankly oh look this guy has a cool Honda Cub uh, he can't see it because he's behind me but we are Honda Cub people ah uh. but yeah the reason I want to know is to most people in Seoul this these kinds of areas, these residential old areas, they would be considered just very uninteresting. This this is what they see sort of day in and day out. It's just old apartments. I mean, just shops like I see a auto repair place there. Appliance stores, etc. I mean, even to me, <laughs> I'm a foreigner, and although I, I find these older buildings romantic, I would say it's still very uneventful-ish to me. Um, yeah. But as the older people sort of, how do you say in a nice way, die out, and younger people move in, They'll start turning this into like a hipster area with nice little cafes, etc. Oh my gosh. Fire. Man, they're sending two, three fire trucks and an ambulance. I. That's not a sight I've seen. Uh, do I even see that in the States? Like that? <laughs> that's, that's a lot of people being sent uh, to a call. Must be a huge fire. But certainly not in uh, Bangkok, where I've been living recently. It's just so hard to navigate through there. And uh, even if the people are being courteous and trying to move to the side, there isn't space for you to... Oh, here, there, on the left. That's a Honda Cub. But that's a Honda Cub C125. Costs twice as much as mine because it's got 
10 extra C's. <laughs> CC's. Um, but I like it. I like it. Uh, it's made in Thailand actually. All the Honda Cubs that are exported to Korea. So if I go to Thailand, I can actually get that exact Honda Cub that costs twice as much as this one here. Just a regular old one for the same price and maybe even less than this regular Honda Cub back in Thailand. That's why I was like, you know what, if I go back to Thailand and I can save up enough money and I'm gonna buy a scooter, I'll buy that one. So I'll just get the regular one here. <laughs> All right, now we're sort of getting closer to Gangnam. If, if not, if, I, if I'm not wrong, we might already be there. Oh yeah, we sort of are. Sort of are. It's not that big of a difference distance-wise, but this is prime real estate here, guys. On to the left, I will be passing by Olympic Park because they had the 88 Olympics, and that was the, the park, basically, where uh, the athletes would gather, etc. You know, those Olympic parks? They have them whenever they have Olympics. <laughs> So it's a super desirable area to live in, although it is one of the more older developed areas of Gangnam area because, you know, they had the Olympics in the 88. So, see the, I don't know if you can see the apartments to the right, I can sort of see it peeking out above, but those are old apartments. Uh, but they're probably just as expensive or probably more expensive than any of the newer ones Located just a couple kilometers to Hanam, you know uh, Just because this is a desirable neighborhood And what triggered me to realize that was I saw Ajushis and Ajumas But they weren't just like wearing any kind of clothes. They're wearing sort of like suit jackets Notice that? It's like casual suit jackets. Because <laughs> Gangnam people wouldn't be caught dead walking out in like ajuma pants, you know, like the stuff that just like loose, etc. They wouldn't do that. <laughs> Alright, here. So these apartments to the right, they're not that new, but it's you're sort of uh, they sort of look like 2000 ish slightly newer style. You'll see they're not just rectangular. <laughs> if they're just rectangular and very cookie cutter looking, you know it's super old. But when you have this sort of curve, etc., then it's, it's getting newer. Really new ones now, however, are much better. They're, you know, comparable to what you'll see like in Bangkok if you've been following me since my Bangkok days. Alright, so we pass Olympic Park to the left and uh, man, we're really venturing into like the heart. Soon we'll be at the very heart of Gangnam. You've been uh, sticking it out with me and hearing me ramble on through the more boring parts of the city. This is, this is a little reward for you guys. Look at that view. That sun, just how it's striking and glimmering on Lotte World Tower right there. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, this, this is where it gets interesting. I think this is sort of where, you know, Seoul really starts here in Gangnam. Uh, the outskirts are just relative residential areas, nice to live in, but not as much character. Alright, I'm gonna follow what that guy does. Uh, but, you know, it's very dangerous doing that kind of stuff with buses and trucks because they have larger blind spots, so I'm just gonna take it easy. Really, why not? Show you guys more of the sights. 
So Lotte World Tower guys, in the bottom floor, it's a huge mall. Um, as you can see, huge mall complex here, right? I did a video on it. If you search back to my trips that I came here with Mayu, I may have can I may have done two vlogs on it. It's a nice area to go. You know, we don't have a lot of money, so we don't even really. I don't even think we bought anything, but we just enjoyed all the free amenities there. Just uh, eye shopping, they say, and uh, trying out different things. Uh, I think we we went to like a video game cafe, if I remember correctly. But around here, there's also an uh, amusement park as well. Uh, there's a big um, lake, which me and Mayu went to. They always have events and festivals. Look at this guy. He's just like... Did you see that? He just cut in because he was trying to overtake that taxi and then ended up behind it anyways. Driving so dangerously just so you can maybe... I don't know. Get to the area where you're stuck. So you're sitting at a stoplight three seconds faster. Ah, Koreans are super impatient. But, uh, you know, you sort of have to be in their defense if you are in Korea because that is the expectation that everyone has on you. That you get to places on time, that you do two, three times as much as anywhere else. See, look at that. Do you ever see girls running like that in America? No, they don't because it's like uncool but here you have to get to where you need to you're on a schedule and that is why this country is one of the largest economic powerhouses in the world small ass country you could drive through in three hours <laughs> Population, 50 million is, is not bad, it's not small, but, you know, considering how many countries have more than 50 million population, I mean, even Thailand has like 70, Vietnam I think is like 90, for example, Korea only is 50, but it's like top 10 economies in the world, it's crazy. And it's that hustle mentality here, that's why. I would hate to live it, but I respect it. That's all I gotta say. Alright, on to the left is Lotte World. I've never been there. It's supposed to be an amusement park, I believe? I always thought it'd be like super in the outskirts of Seoul. Which, I think, back in the days it was. I mean, this is Gangnam. I mean, it used to be rice fields, you know, like decades ago. So, it was in the outskirts, but now it's just sort of in the heart, this amusement park. Um, so I don't know, I'll, I'll probably have to go there one day. Alrighty. Jeez, I, I'm sure I'm exceeding the speed limit, but these guys are going so fast. Okay, I'm gonna go with the flow of the traffic here. Back up. A guy with a 50cc scooter is going faster than I am. Okay. Alright. Oh. Oh, jeez. I have to stop. I have to stop. I have to stop. Drive safe. <laughs> There's evidence. I'm vlogging. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, may, I may break laws or whatever, but I believe you guys, I, I'm trying my best to navigate these uh, crazy roads here. Oh geez, there's a cop right there too. I would have been screwed. <laughs> there's cops everywhere. I just saw a motorcycle cop pass on the left. Jeez. Um, so you'll notice all these uh, quick delivery guys. <sighs> this has been a issue of contention apparently. Um, because Koreans expect deliveries to be very instant like if you order food it better be at my you know doorstep in 15 minutes I kid you not 
be cooked and delivered to my doorstep in 15 minutes. That's the expectation of service out here. Um, and um, these delivery guys, they're under a lot of pressure to meet that. Plus, they're hustling. They want to make money. So more deliveries, more money, right? Um, so they tend to break laws and, you know, they're, they're probably not really hurting anyone in a sense like if a motorcycle guy gets in an accident you know it's only the motorcycle guy that's gonna get hurt like the car is not really gonna get hurt there isn't too much of an issue with that but because the police are concerned that these motorcycle drivers are just getting injured quite a lot with more deliveries especially with the demand for more deliveries from the coronavirus etc um, Jeez. You guys notice everyone wearing masks even outside? Everyone. Like 100%. Wow. That made me lose my train of thought. But yeah, because of that, they're, um, I heard they're enforcing, um, <laughs> the law against motorcycle drivers, <laughs> I guess. Um, that sounds, that sounds weird. Uh, what is this? This accessory may not be supported. My charger is not charging, guys. What is going on here? Okay, sorry, I couldn't see my GPS. I had to slow down. And now because of that, I'm stuck behind a police car, getting nervous. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's just, I'm sorry, the American condition to me. It's not only uh, the black folks, but even Asian folks, I mean any, any folks, white folks, whenever we see the police, we're conditioned to be afraid. <laughs> uh, Alright, I got to make a left. Jeez, this GPS doesn't give you enough of a notice. Isn't this a left turn? Oh, no, it's not a left turn only. Oh my god. Now I'm screwed. Switched into first gear. So I can take off. Okay. What? I, I wasn't aware that there was any turns. I thought I was supposed to go straight. Oh, I hope it's not rerouting me because of traffic. Okay. Oh, but yeah, guys, um, I haven't been to this part of Gangnam, but what can I say? It's what I sort of expected. Um, oh, I'll sort of make a left turn. You see, it looks like it's just endless rows of big office buildings, but you see that there in front? Behind these office buildings, you will see lots of these bar areas and local streets that have character. Uh, that's because these guys who go to the office, after they work hard, what do they do? They play hard. <laughs> I'll let you figure that out. Um, what is going on here? Why is that truck moving in front of us? But it says red. See, this is what's complicated. These crosswalks in, in Seoul, they should be situated, you know, right in front of the intersection. But there is like a space that deceives you like what's going on so that's how I failed my test in Gangnam it was one of one of these situations I was supposed to make a left and it was completely green red I mean green uh, arrow left turn and I was doing it and it was one of those little spaces in the before a crosswalk where there is enough for one car and there was a a light and it was yellow and I ran it and uh, even running a yellow light is a signal violation so uh, that's how I failed it guys <laughs> uh, in Gangnam like sorry excuse me for being like very 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 cautious now if I lived in Seoul however I think it's it's not going to be that big of a deal because you'll sort of memorize the routes and 
know these points. That's how the people in Seoul are able to drive in, with such complex roads because they'll generally drive in the same areas. They're always used to driving, so you, you know, you tend to remember the routes you go. And you know, oh, here you gotta watch out for that weird intersection, etc. But first time, if you're driving in Seoul, you'll be having a tough time. Okay, what is this? I'm not, this isn't the Hangang. Okay, the Hangang is on to the right, guys. This is not the Han River, but it's like a small, what do you call it, estuary? Small little, uh, man, my geography, 8th grade geography is slow right now. It's, it's running past it. So this separates Gangnam from the next, district, which if I get stuck in a light, I'll pull it up on the GPS. Okay, which is... What district is this? This is Socho. Wait, no, never mind. This is actually the heart of Gangnam. Jeez, sorry. It's still the heart of Gangnam. <laughs> Alright, uh... There's another little stream or river like that I have to pass by later on, I guess. Uh, ooh. By the way, this Gangnam area is just huge, guys, compared to the other districts in Seoul. I might be, you know, I'm, I'm a bit hazy on not even hazy, just not very informed on... Oh, look at that police guy. He waved me in, so I, I went, even though it was turning orange. You know, impeding traffic is maybe more of a sin than small signal violations in real life here in Korea. Uh, so that's why you gotta go with the flow of the traffic. Oh, jeez. Okay, this is definitely a stop. Yeah, this is the old area of Gangnam. Oh, why? Someone honks at me. Alright, nope. <sighs> Jeez, look, look at that. I'm gonna twist my handle to the left. See how old that building is there? That is old as... I've never seen such an old apartment building. You would think they would tear it down and um, build something else on top of it, but... Being in such a desirable area, that apartment is probably in demand, that's why. It's probably much like Hong Kong where on the outside it looks all run down. But when you actually go in and see how they decorate it inside, it's super nice. You know? It's a slab of concrete so it's built to last. Um, just needs to be pleasant inside, right? Alrighty. Oh man. Okay, so you'll probably be seeing a lot more of this. Just these crowded roads now. Something I am very unsure of as a motorcycle driver, um, it's like a gray area, is you're technically only supposed to drive on the far right or if it is like three lanes or more I could drive on the middle lane but I cannot drive on the far left lane unless it's to overtake but with so much traffic overtaking can be like pretty much forever you know what I'm saying? Like, you're you're in the process of overtaking, but you're stuck <laughs> uh, because the traffic just completely stopped. Uh, so it's like one of those things where the cops can't really enforce it. They're probably stuck in traffic too. So are they gonna chase after you? Are you really, you know, hurting anybody? You're just gonna weave in and out, you know? Um, if you do something dangerous, it's it's just your life you're putting yourself in danger and quite frankly when it's like back-to-back -back traffic like this it's not like you're gonna die you know you'll probably drive into a parked car at what am I driving this is 20 kilometers per hour you know 
which is slower than what I could run it at. And uh, yeah, so that's why. That's why. Oh, what? I'm making a right turn. Jeez. It might have. It must have rerouted me because I remember looking at the GPS and it said it was just straight. But it's. Uh, <laughs> It's trying to have me avoid traffic, and I laugh at that because there's so much traffic still. Oh, man. Uh, but I did have one of the viewers comment, you know, you talk about traffic, but what about Bangkok? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is not, nothing compared to Bangkok. It's quite pleasant. That space that I just drove through to the side, that's like space that three scooters in Bangkok can drive through, side by side. <laughs> uh, I should be able to make a right turn. Oh man, those, you know, no right turn on red, that kind of stuff. It's in, like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. I, I don't see. It's red. Okay. No one, if no one's honking at me, then <laughs> you know it's it's weird. You you would get you you would think you'd get nervous if someone's honking at you, but when nobody's honking at me, it's like something strange. They should have honked at me to move on. Oh man, sorry guys. See that too. It's just I need someone to honk at me to give me assurance. Yeah, it's okay to go ahead. <laughs> Uh, over there, like, uh, this uh, older man was, he, he was about to step into the thing, that's why I had to take a second take, even though it was clearly green, I'm like, am I breaking some law? Did I just misread the signs? <laughs> um, which gets complicated, it's, it's, <sighs> you guys think I'm like, uh, not an experienced driver or something, I know, but... It gets complicated because we're programmed in our head to move whenever we see green, right? But here in Korea, with all these pedestrian crosswalks, you're supposed to stop when you see green on a pedestrian. So that's where it gets com complicated. My, my brain is just simply wired for simple American roads, where it's like green, go, red, stop. But it's like, you know, when I make a right turn, I have to look at the pedestrian separately. And if that says green, that's a no-go. Uh, so I have to make sure, you know, oh, that's a really cool, like, street onto the right. Oh, I wish I could show you guys that. Um, yeah, but I have to, like, do many checks. Uh, <laughs> uh, check if the thing is green at the intersection and make sure both the pedestrian walks in front and when I make the right turn is red. But if it's green uh, at the intersection uh, but it's red only on the right turn then I can still go as long as the pedestrian there's no pedestrians walking through it you know see how complicated that is um, ay, ay, ay. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but man, that the Korean driver's license test really screwed my head. All right, what, what part of Gangnam is this? Oh, I smell such delicious stuff here. Oh, that's guabegi. That's Korean-style donuts. Onto the right. Uh, you can't see it because I'm right next to it, but just rewind back if you, <laughs> if you want to see it, but just take my word for it. Oh, I have to make a left here. Jeez, what? You know, I swear, this was a straightaway. It just rerouted me. Oh my gosh, that was fast. I have to look. I'm peeking over now. Okay. Uh. Oh, now I see these uh, kickboard guys. Uh, I don't know what you call these electric scooters. I guess you just call it electric scooters. But in Korea, we call them kickboards. Um, they're 
sort of like rentable by an app and they're everywhere there's like two big brands I believe that one I see says kick going something but those are real contention here too because technically it's electrical motorized so it should be driven on the regular roads I guess because if you drive on the sidewalk, it could be dangerous to pedestrians, etc. Oh my gosh, what's going on? No, I'm not, I'm not going. <laughs> huh, no one's honking at me, so I'm just gonna stay put. Uh, yeah, I gotta get the red, the green. Uh, yeah. Oh, why are they honking at me? Sometimes it says unprotected left. Um, but they'll use very technical Korean and write it up in Korean so this is why it's a bit difficult to drive here as a foreigner um, yeah you know I don't know why I never had issues like this in Thailand and it's probably because first of all Thailand doesn't have a lot of these intersections and um, they usually do the U-turns it's like U-turn only and they don't have these four-way intersections and whether it be yeah I never like really remember having to deal with signs like no turn on uh, <laughs> unprotected green no turn on no right turn on red that kind of stuff but it's all out here fortunately it's all written in Korean uh, all right school district this is this is important too guys driving in Korean roads with the birth rate at its lowest in Korea children are the most prized assets of this country if you hit a child in these child protected road areas designated areas you're going to jail <laughs> like, it's very serious uh, I mean that's true everywhere not not really actually in uh, in Thailand you, you hear all those you, know, you heard about the Red Bull guy um, yeah <laughs> killing people and still doesn't go to jail so all right guys super long light so I was able to change my batteries oh my gosh look at this guy he's honking at me because I'm I'm taking the left turn too slowly. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Alright. Oh my god, it's like he, he merged over three lanes to the right to try to overtake me. Good gracious. And he got stuck behind another car. Ah. Oh my gosh, it's starting to rain now too. What is going on? Everything is not going as planned with this. Oh, jeez. Alright, sorry for the... Uh, the random... Unexpected turn of events here in my vlogging. It's not as smooth as I expected it to be. A straight path down Seoul. <clears throat> GPS rerouting me everywhere. Okay, so up here... This is Yonsei University, by the way. And if I had to... Based on my little knowledge... Um, there's two big universities in Korea that are like well-recognized. It would be Seoul National University... Or is it Seoul University? Because there's another one like that has a similar name as Seoul, but it's not Seoul De. It's like a different Seoul National University or something. But there's a Seoul University, and then the second big one would be Yonsei. It would be like the Harvard and Oxford of England. And much like Harvard and Oxford, they have rivalries, they have like baseball games, etc. Almost like even in Bangkok, you got the Chula Thammasat rivalry going on. So that would be the two. Yonsei is this one right here. And I didn't know that Yonsei was located here. I know where Seoul is. Uh, which would be 
sort of passing by near Quanuck area, Quanuck district. Just actually sort of close to here, that's why it's probably a big rivalry. Y'all also know of Hongdae, right? Because I keep talking about it, big district, etc. And Ihua University is right next to it. But they're not really rivals to Yonsei and Seoul because they're more of an art school, guys. <laughs> and much like in America too, like people who can't really study well go to art schools, right? <laughs> it's not really true. It's really hard to get into Hongdae, but uh, they, they don't consider them the same pedigree. And Niwa University is like an all female only university kind of thing. So I'm not saying they're not smart or whatever, but they're not gonna have like the baseball matches, etc., right? So, <clears throat> so that area is more of an artsy district. Uh, the intellects are here, I guess. Uh, alrighty. What is this area? This area is really newish. Uh, Prugio, I see this building right here to the right. That is, um, they make apartments. They're like Lumpini, for example. Actually, they're high end, so they're more like, uh, okay, you know what? Even if this reroutes me, I'm just gonna go straight because from here I can go straight. This is Hocho. I actually believe I'll be passing by the intersection I showed you guys in my... Oh, actually I haven't made it public yet, but my Quanuck Mountain video, I go and have you know, surprisingly the most delicious kongguksu ever, being cold bean noodles. Uh, it was near here. Da -da -da. That's nice. It's, um, they have older apartments, but uh, the residential buildings I see are sort of like lower. They're not like the huge tall apartment buildings. It's like three to five, six, seven stories high, but they're relatively newer buildings. Not so old. I mean, they're not very new, but I like stuff like this. It gives character. Mimi we Gangnam. So this is technically Gangnam still. Huh. I'm contemplating if I can just go up top and show you guys more, but uh, just follow the GPS, go on the underpass. Very s you'll see this a lot, and what also makes driving in so complicated is that when you want to make a left turn or a U-turn, you have to go to the right because Koreans make all these underpasses to keep the flow of traffic going and not like stuck at these lights. See how that could get complicated? In America it's quite simple. If you're making a left or you need to do a U-turn, you plan by sticking to the left-hand lane. But here you just you just gotta know, you gotta know. Like or just follow the GPS. <laughs> It tells you go under the underpass, etc. Uh, there's really no way, as a brand new first time driver in Seoul, you can navigate these roads without a GPS. Um, now, if I lived here in this district and I was driving these roads day in, day out, I would know, but yeah, it's so complicated. Oh my gosh. What is this? My GPS is now doing some crazy thing. There must be... It is telling me to stick to the left three lanes. 
It even has a picture. The far right says it's headed toward Pusan. What? I hope it's not routing me to a freeway, because if it does, I... <laughs> Uh, you'll you'll see something interesting where I'll be asking the ticketing people. I, I made a wrong turn. Please let me out. Forgive me, because motorcycles are not legally allowed to go on um, the tollways. Okay, it's coming up in 3.8 kilometers. Okay, it's warning me way ahead of time. Let's try to get through here. Okay. So this is Hacho officially. Hacho Ku. Um. Yeah, it's an area I honestly haven't really covered. What is in Hacho Ku? Not not much really, other than Seoul University. You know, I've been here. <sighs> before I was vlogging quite a lot because I like maybe it's not Seocho technically but I like Shilim Dong you got Kuz and Dongs you know Kuz is like the district and then Dong is like even a sub-district of that district but they have like really good um, there is not street food per se because if you know now we say street food you think of like Bangkok where it's like carts it's like local food whereas you go into these very local restaurants and um, get some real local flavors so that's why I like Hilimdong they're particularly known for their blood sausage <laughs> stir-fried blood sausage it's quite good actually oh man I remember a night out stir-fried blood sausage and uh, makgeolli oh one of the best nights All right, here's my impression of Sochogu. You know, because of Seoul University being around here, I always thought it's sort of grungy and underdeveloped, but this looks pretty nicely developed to me. Big office buildings, just not as high rise. Oh, this is this is Yesure Jandang on the left, which is like a big. It's like where the Korean Philharmonic plays, etc. You know, this is technically still Gangnam. Not technically, but it's technically Sochu, but this is like Gangnam still. This is where Gangnam people hang out. <laughs> um, but, I will let you know, on the right-hand side of this Yesure Jandang that we just passed by, uh, me and my parents just had the most authentic and delicious soft tofu. It's right on to the right. It's a Michelin star restaurant. Not that expensive, I think. It's definitely less than 10 bucks for a dish. But it's... Uh, you can't compare it to BCD. Some of you who know about soft tofu from America, know about BCD tofu BCD tofu is like uh, although they try to not put MSG later just mass produced soft tofu this is legit soft tofu they give it to you uh, plain as well and you just get that very nutty flavor <laughs> I'm gonna just continue talking about soft tofu because here you don't really see much it's just <laughs> parks uh, yeah on the left that should be there should be two big mountains here on the left hand side around here uh, part of the green belt Kwanak mountain is actually my favorite mountain here in Seoul even though Pukhansan is much more well known you guys should all hike it unfortunately my GoPro lost half the footage and uh, <laughs> this vlog I'm also a little concerned my GoPro is gonna lose it it is the most unreliable piece of equipment I have unfortunately
Wow. On to the right hand side though, it's like San Francisco. You can't see it, but we're sort of elevated. So you're looking down and it's towards the center of Seoul where the Hangang River is. It looks beautiful guys. It's like looking into the bay. Man, such a good. This is really pleasant. I never realized how pleasant it is. Obviously, you know, I haven't really come out here because it's not like where street food or anything would be at, but driving through here, it's nice. What can I say? Wow, why is this? Okay. Now I see more of the grungy area up front. Oh, my exceeding speed limit. No, 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 no. They got these speed limit cameras everywhere. Okay. Oh, this is, this is, this is the most enjoyable part of the drive so far. Ah. Again guys, I don't want you guys to think that this represents most of Seoul because most of Seoul is much more crowded. This is sort of the outskirts. But it is still Seoul. Alright, full throttle for like the first time. Woohoo! Wow, it's so beautiful here. Oh my gosh, look at look at the left. Wow. And I'm liking Sacho. This is definitely the heart of Seoul. Like it's literally located in the center. And uh, they have nice big roads. But it still has that old character. Let's look at the residents of Socho at this intersection. What kind of people do I see? I see a lot of hiker people. I see people with hiking gear because Hanuk Mountain is right there. Um, young people, maybe because there's uh, colleges. You know, they're sort of like hipsterish. Not all dolled up like Gangnam girls. I like that. Man. This is uh, starting to become my favorite area of Seoul. Um, it's, it's just the right balance of old and modernness. Oh, this is just so scenic. Just how, oh man, I don't know if my camera translates it well, but how the sun is just beating on the road and you get that golden pavement. This this is what I like. This, I don't know, this green rice fields and um, this golden pavement. That's what, this is better than looking at the ocean for me. I, I don't know. This is the same for a lot of you guys, but yeah, green rice fields and this golden pavement. Uh, it's not going to look as good if you're in a car. I couldn't appreciate it when I was in a car, but when you are on a scooter connected to this road, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's better than going to a beach. All right. Yeah, these buildings definitely do seem old, but they're well maintained. Man, I really like the vibe of this place. You can't really see it, but because um, I'm just going down the main big one, but as I'm looking to the left into the little alleyways, they have so much character, guys. Little street food vendors here and there. So much character. I'm gonna have to revisit this place when COVID's over. 
this will be like a hood I'll be hanging out. Am I still in Socho though? I <laughs> probably passed it. Let's see. Uh... Man, the... <laughs> even the signals here is just giving me green after green. No time for me to check the location. Oh, that's, that huge building is a church. Okay, so I'm almost at Seoul National University. So this tells me this is Kwanak District. Let me just double check. So this should be Shilimdong. Yep, this is Kwanak. So this area, Kwanakku, and sort of the part that's away from Gangnam, Sokcho. This is the right balance, I like it. On to the right hand side, um, it's gonna be a super scenic area because that's where the Seoul National Cemetery is. I don't know, that just sort of sounds morbid. That's where dead people are, but that's uh, the Seoul National University is where, you know, the patriots of Korea are buried. It's like the Arlington, Arlington Cemetery, is, is that the official term? Where basically uh, people who have served the country for a long time in the military or um, people who have died in the Korean War, presidents, etc. They are buried there. And it's right by the river, super scenic, green area. Um, yeah, and on to the left you have Seoul National University. This would be a place I'd like to live in. Um, when I was looking for like cheap little you know, one rumors to rent. Strangely, there is quite a bit of affordable stuff here in Shilin. You know, I've always heard this is like, you know, the grungy, dirty part of the area from some people. But I don't know. Looks fine to me. Looks super safe. I mean, there isn't really any place in Korea that isn't safe. It's probably like. <laughs> The elitist, like the Gangnam people, just saying, "Ew, it's not that great." But I love it. I love it here. Um, all right. Nah, I see. This is how I scout out neighborhoods, guys. You just gotta go and drive through them in a motorcycle. You get a vibe with the place. You would smell it too, but unfortunately I'm wearing a mask. Uh, hopefully you can hear me well. Oh no 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 no. So after um Shilimdong Kwanak district we should be getting closer to Yeongdeungpo and that is now getting to the really like old part of Seoul. Yeongdeungpo, I was surprised. Me and Mayu last time we came around like uh, actually it's that's been quite a while because the whole reason I'm going into Seoul right now um, even with COVID and all this and my family's accepting me in is because I need to get my uh, permanent resident visa renewed. It's, I guess it's not technically permanent residency because you have to renew it every three years but it's perpetual. Um, and then I had to go to Yeongdeungpo for that. They changed the office now to Kimpo. But that was three years ago and then me and Mayu we, we went out there uh, to do my renewal and uh, <laughs> We found the red light district. I mean, that's surprising for Korea because y'all have to know how like prude is that how you say it? prude? Call girls like you're so prude or whatever. Um, but Korea, it's 
illegal to even watch porno. porno like that's that's how uh, like of a moral state it is, right? Like if you try to go to any like uh, adult websites, it'll be blocked by the cyber police or whatever here. So seeing like a red light district where there were like girls in these windows with pink lights in Yongdeungpo, I was like, oh, this this is definitely the old part of town. Oh, you know what? I like this. I like this vibe though. It's it's a bit more local. <laughs> Ajima's funny. I like her. She's like checking. Hey, are you gonna run with me? There's still four. There's like eight seconds left. She made it just in time. See? Man. Uh, that kind of stuff uh, brings a smile to my face. It, I, you know, I, I don't like it when in America there's like two seconds left, but then some guy will start strolling across the intersection like he owns the darn road, and then he doesn't even walk fast. Like he has to act cool, so he's like just like you know strolling through it. What the heck, you know? It's like complete lack of courtesy to the 20, 30 people waiting at the intersection to cross just because you want to look cool, you don't hurry across. But here it's not, they're, they're not even like hurrying across, they're like running across. And she makes it just in time, you know. It's very rare for you to see, um, yeah, Koreans not make it past before that time. At, at the most, it's like two seconds over, you know? Because they're really in a hurry and there's only like four seconds left, they'll like sprint across it and then they'll, you know, get honked at because they're a second over. <laughs> oh, this looks familiar. Shilim! Ah, that's why it looks familiar. This is actually one station I've been to quite often. This is Shilim Station. Lots of nice eateries around here, guys. And I think this is also where you have to get off to go to Seoul National University. Ah, observing the residents. Lots of young people, to be expected. But young people dress casually. I mean, Shilim is known to have a lot of like these one rooms. It's like a college area. So affordable place for you to live and study. And that's why I also like the eateries around here. Because they, they haven't been overtaken by franchises. So it retains all that local flavor. Um, street food that's been around for, you know, decades. And at the same time... Ah, what the heck? And at the same time, oh, it's very affordable. That's sort of how it was in Hongdae. But, you know, Hongdae got too big for itself. And uh, it started getting gentrified. So it's still relatively affordable for it being gentrified because the vast majority of people who go there are young kids but not as affordable as here. Oh, I like this vibe. Look at this. This is really old school Seoul now. This is maybe Yongdeungpo already. Yeah. 
Now this is like sort of reminding me of Bangkok. Uh, the roads are still much better. <laughs> Here. Okay. Oh, look at all that. Sesame seed oils. Selling it by truckloads. <laughs> that guy just ran to red. What? That's a pretty common thing I see people do. I mean, if they don't see cops, they'll do it. But it's one of these things where it's like maybe a three-way intersection. You can go on the far right-hand side, and because technically, even if you know the other car is making a left turn, he's not going to run into you. They'll just ride along the right-hand side, or they'll just like drive into a gas station or whatever. Uh, that's at the intersection on the right hand side and drive out <laughs> You know those those little gray areas scooters oh, I think um, The far right hand lane here is a bus lane uh, This really confuses me because there are these which is, but it's good that they have bus only lanes because that's why public transportation is so consistent and fast, these buses. You have these bus only lanes, but see these, it's sort of faded out, it's blue. Maybe they, they stopped making it a bus lane. But obviously it'll be far left, far right hand side, and then all of a sudden, um, these, the, blue lines will disappear because you have to obviously make a left hand turn or a right hand turn so for the intersection those areas all traffic can merge so it's a uh... oh man just you guys know how complicated it is with carpools right on the freeway and they'll just release it sort of right before an exit this is far more complicated it's every intersection you have these bus carpool lanes and uh, you have to merge in and between them. And sometimes you can't go into every bus lane because they'll make two lanes left turns, so they'll never release the bus lane. It'll just consistently be bus lane. I don't know if that makes sense, but yep. And uh, guys, this is like the the biggest local road that I'm actually driving through here in Seoul. Uh, if I venture into the center, it's far more complex. This is where it's actually simple to drive. It's actually been relatively pleasant. Bus, bus, bus. That's what it says right here. What? Where is this? Shinhung Tero. Oh, it's telling me I need to stay on the far left hand lane. When it gets really. Darn it, my mic. Uh, it's like the worst, worst time for my mic to come on. Oh, I managed to put it on. Sorry guys, my mic just fell off. And uh, it was like a area where I had to stay on the far left-hand lane, otherwise, I don't know. I might have been led to a freeway. I've never seen GPSs do that anywhere else in the world. Like in certain areas, they will pull up a graphic 
and show you exactly how many lanes there are and they'll tell you you have to stay on just the two left or one left or show a picture of an underpass <clears throat> because it's not enough just to stay stay right or stay left it's like sometimes you have to go to the middle lanes etc huh I think we are in Yeongdeungpo or passing through it and we will actually be in Gyeonggi province and going into Gwangmyeong city which is actually where I'm gonna end it and you will see just how there isn't really like a, a break of this is LA this is Orange County even I can tell with that LA you have like downtown LA and then you have vast swaths of like residential area south central you know areas that we don't really venture into you just see it in the freeway and then you you end up in Orange County and you, you have a distinct like Orange County area but here it's just city after city after city it's continued and stuck and it's uh this area is a different province all of a sudden oh my gosh why is it telling me to do a left turn <gasps> it rerouted me oh looky here guys I'm already in Gwangmyeong <laughs> I thought I was in Yeongdeungpo you see you see it's uh I'm at my destination already I can't, yeah, the, the cities are so densely populated here. Okay, I, I, I can make a left turn here. Oh. Yep. So here is, I went from two, like basically this trip is from two of my favorite shopping areas one is Hanam Starfield and then I'll be ending up here at the Mario outlet and I, I've done so many vlogs on this this is like the only place I'll really buy clothes because it's so cheap uh, anywhere else it's just very expensive to buy clothes in Korea so I decided to end it there nice stopping point uh, my cousin lives around there etc I don't want to disclose the location of where my family members live per se so that's where I'll end it but here in Gwangmyeong oh shit I here in Gwangmyeong uh, it's a pretty new city I remember my aunt used to live in uh, Mokdong and she sold her smaller apartment there and moved to this new city and this was maybe around 2000s or whatever and she thought the prices would go up in this area because you know it's like a newly developed area blah 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 little did she know that Mokdong ends up becoming like the most expensive area in Seoul and then she regrets making that decision uh, otherwise her apartment would have been like twice the value here in Gwangmyeong it just sort of I don't know I guess I like it but to people in Seoul it's like well it's not that new because you know there's newer cities now like Hanam but it's not also that central so prices haven't risen as much although prices of condo here are no joke all right so this is Mario outlet I don't know if you can see high enough but where the Sun is at it says Mario outlet I must now find parking which is not that hard as a scooter. I see some guy just parked over there. 
I'll just maybe park over there. <laughs> Nope. Ah, oh, it's leading me to the parking lot. I guess I should appreciate it, but I don't. Because that's not where I'm going to park. Ah, oh, I got to go near the Lotte outlet because that's where I'm going to store my bed. Jeez, are you kidding me? Well, I can't figure it out. I'll just end the vlog here. <laughs> Take off my mask. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe a bit of rambling but I try my best while trying to not get in an accident if you like this kind of video let me know I'm doing it only as a popular request because you know this motorcycle video is in such demand and this is probably the only way I'm gonna really show you Seoul because I'm not really you know staying in there as a result of uh, COVID etc so see you guys next time for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia